make the first date cheap um, because the first date is a vibe check the first date is you know like do we match on our fundamental values yes or no if yes do I want to see this person again did I like them enough were they kind enough were they interesting enough intelligent enough respectful enough uh, for me to want to see them again so it shouldn't cost a lot of money for that first date because it is just a vibe check. That's it. So I say a beverage and a walk. Uh, would you suggest dating a best friend? Um, I, I Honestly, I don't see something wrong with that, right? If the two of you are on the same page, that's a great way to start a relationship. We know each other. We care about each other. We understand each other. What's wrong with that? Uh, any tips for introverted people? Um, so you need to fake it, right? Um, I understand that introverted people recharge their mental emotional batteries when they're alone, but you do need to get out there and talk to people. So um, if you're in a social situation, do go up to people and start conversations, even if you feel like you don't want to. Um, and do what you need to do to recharge your batteries before you go out on dates so that you don't feel like you are emotionally and physically tapped and it's not hard to be present for the date. My boyfriend wants me back after one month, but I've already slept with someone else. What do I do? You sleeping with someone else doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Nobody has a right to say to you, I don't want to be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. You being physical with someone else is your business. Do you want to get back with him? You know, I don't know, right? Um, I don't know if you should, because I don't know what happened. I don't know if he's a selfish short-term thinker. And if he is, don't. Don't go back to a selfish short-term thinker. You need to level up and get in a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. Don't go back without redefining your relationship and leveling it up and insisting if we do get back together, it needs to be a new version of this relationship. Don't go back without reading Fix That Shit and understanding how to have a functional relationship where conflict resolution is easy and you guys don't get into fights. So if you're wondering if you should go back, whether or not you sell with someone else is um, what's the word? Irrelevant, right? It's irrelevant. Um, if you're considering going back, I highly suggest you get a coaching session so that I can help you understand whether or not it's a good idea. What if his mother is controlling like he isn't even allowed to date until he's financially stable? Don't date somebody who doesn't manage their own life, period. That's a, that's a child, right? My mommy says I can't date. So don't date a child. You need an adult. You need a man. You need somebody who passes the 12 character traits in No More Assholes. Do read No More Assholes so that you understand what you should be wanting. A child, somebody whose mom dictates their life, is not what you should be wanting. The fact that you are wanting that shows that you need to understand what you should be seeking in a relationship. Uh, I like that verbiage, short-term thinker, move past him, yes. Uh, can I find your books at chapters? So a lot of bookstores don't have my books on their shelves because I am self-published, but they, like I am uh, in the expanded distribution range. So any bookstore can order my books if you go to that store and say, hey, can you order this book in? And chapters is definitely one of them. Chapters, Barnes and Nobles, all of them can order my books in if you want to go to that store and go get it from that store. Uh, 12 character traits sound interesting, yes. I don't divulge the 12 character traits on my lives. If you go through my platform, my YouTube channel, my podcast with a fine tune comb, you're probably gonna find those 12 character traits, but as it stands now, I am keeping them as a trade secret because I want you guys to dive into No More Assholes because there's so much you need to understand on what it takes to get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. 
Uh, what do you do with a generous long-term thinking narcissist? No, 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 no. Um, narcissists are people who don't care about anybody but themselves. Generous long-term thinkers, generous long-term thinker. I want to take care of somebody. I want to be generous. I want to be sacrificing. I want to take care of somebody for the long-term. A narcissist is not a generous long-term thinker. You're so helpful. Yay. I love you. I'm here for you. He is all of that with a larger ego. Then maybe he's not a narcissist. Maybe you guys just need to learn some functional relationship behavioral tools. If that's the case, come get a coaching session so that I can help you understand how to navigate this. Grab a copy of Fix That Shit. So beautiful and glasses, thank you. Are your books targeted towards helping women? Do you have some that also benefit men? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, so I am currently writing Fix That Shit for men. Men do love reading Fix That Shit because they feel very heard and validated. This is my conversation to women on how they can fix their relationship and have it be conflict free. You're very welcome to read this. You'll be a fly on the wall. You can use all the tools inside, but you're also going to understand how we think and feel a little bit better. But I did write one specifically for you. It is available now. This is the perfect play. This is for a single men. This is to help men get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. So, you know, like you're either a man or a woman. So you're ready for a relationship. You're a man or woman, man or woman mode, generous long-term thinking mode, or you're in guy or girl mode, selfish short-term thinking mode. I just want to have fun. I don't want to take care of anybody. I'm not looking to create lifelong plans with somebody. Is it true that all men cheat? No, it's not. Who says the definition of narcissist? It's in the, um, uh, the, the, there's a manual that psychiatrists use that, um, helps them, uh, diagnose disorders. Narcissism is a mental disorder. It's an overused term. Um, so psychiatrists can diagnose narcissism using their manual. Um, I forget the name of it, but are you a teacher? Uh, am I a teacher? Guys, am I a teacher? I'm a coach. Can someone have narcissistic tendencies but not be a full-blown narcissist? Yeah, somebody can, like, you know, absolutely. You're welcome. How do you become a long-term thinker? Uh, so there are 12 character traits for understanding what a generous long-term thinker is. If you want to know what all 12 are, do grab a copy of No More Assholes. Do open relationships work and last? Some do, some don't. The diagnose, the manual diagnosis DSM, Diag diagnostics, di yes, that one. The DSM, the DSM, yes, 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 my, my, my psychology students, yes, the DSM. Hello. Uh, what if you're called a narcissist by someone who wants to avoid their own toxic behavior? I don't care what people call me as a deflection. So what? Your hair is on fire. Uh, I'd say you're a teacher. Love it. Uh, yeah, I don't care. I don't care what they want to call me. I'm in my 30s and think it's getting harder, even impossible to find a good man. That mindset is certainly getting in your way. Um, I do suggest you grab no more assholes, get some hope. Get some hope inside of you because you will never manifest the man you want if you doubt they exist. You, like literally you will you'll walk past him. He'll be knocking on your door and you won't open it because you don't think he exists. So you need to change that mindset in order for you to recognize him when he is in front of you. Do grab no more assholes. Understand what they look like. Understand your power to create what it is that you want in your life. Reduce this anxiety that's creating these anxious thoughts and get out there and go find your man. How can you tell when you're being gaslighted? You know what reality is. 
when somebody tries to tell you that reality isn't reality, for instance, for instance, there's a guy uh, going crazy in my comments, Chad, who's familiar with Chad? Who knows who Chad is? Some of you guys have been responding to him. Uh, Chad has been saying that uh, women shaking their butts on social media is the same as a guy talking to other girls, DMing, flirting with other girls. It's the same. Her, her like enjoying her body is the same as a guy who's in a relationship hitting up girls and flirting with them. That's gaslighting because same is same, right? Like, like a book is the same as a book, but a book isn't the same as a MacBook, right? So exactly, exactly. So when somebody tries to tell you that this is reality, when in fact, you know what reality is, that's gaslighting. Your book just arrived. Awesome. Uh, what do you think about high frequency sounds to manifest? Yes, yes. Get into binaural beats, my love. Get into frequencies. Everything is frequency. Every thought you have is a frequency. Every word you say is a frequency. So absolutely, frequency makes shit happen. It absolutely makes things happen. Um, I saw this, somebody, um, you know, you, you attach a water hose, have water coming out of it, attach it to a speaker and turn the music on and you'll see the water dance. You'll see it move in different shapes depending on what you're playing. Frequency makes things move. It literally does. Your books have helped me so much. I have all your books. Girl, you got online, you got online. Is that right? I love you, you're amazing. Uh, how can you tell if you're being love bombed? Uh, so, I mean, seriously, as somebody who doesn't know you yet saying they love you, I see the world in you, like you're everything, right? But dude, it's been two weeks, like you literally don't even know me yet. That's love bombing. Always use a no kissing for three months dating room, no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months because people who are over the top, um, you know, how does that play out over three months? Love bombing doesn't play out over three months without kissing and sex and sleepovers. It literally doesn't. People use love bombing as a manipulation tool in order to get what they want when they want it. So using a no kissing, no sleepovers for three months dating rule means you are ensuring there is time and space. You're not letting them encroach on you. You're, you're making sure there's time and space so that you can make the right decisions for yourself. Does love bombing always mean manipulation? Sometimes somebody just, it was love at first sight and so they are head over heels. Um, sometimes people are just extremely immature, right? And, and so uh, I have no control over my emotions and my behaviors. So it can mean a variety of things, but using that no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months dating rule means you don't fall for immaturity. You don't fall for manipulation, whatever it may be. If in fact it was love at first sight and they like, I've never been this way, I've never felt this way, oh my God, let's see the consistency over three months. If the consistency lasts over three months and you like this person more and more, they're respectful and listen, any, any disrespect, goodbye motherfucker. I said, I don't kiss for three months and you're trying to get it in, you're trying to get that kiss on. I'm not going to see you anymore because you don't respect me. It's more about what you want and when you want it than what I want and how I feel. <laughs> uh, a guy and I used to flirt and then we stopped. Now he's flirting again. How do I tell him to stop? It's really easy. You go, no, you can't do that. And just like that, when he flirts with you, just say, uh-uh, you can't do that. Why? We don't do that anymore. Why not? I don't want us to. Why don't you want us to? I just don't. Uh, a guy and I, yes. My ex is lying about me. We broke out three years ago. She's still interested or does she hate me? It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Life begins when you ask the right question. What your ex is doing is irrelevant to your present moment and how you're planning your future. If you keep looking at what your ex is doing, 
then you're not looking forward. And in order to achieve what it is that you want to achieve, then you need to keep moving forward. So your ex can say and do whatever they want to do, but you're intent on moving forward. Girl, you're on your A game. I've seen you live three times today, yes. Yes, I love going live. If your significant other gets angry and withdrawn when you raise issues, do you bother trying again or just leave? So try doing what's and fix that shit. Are, first of all, the first question is, are you with a generous long-term thinker or a selfish short-term thinker? If you're with a selfish short-term thinker, then you go. If you're with a generous long-term thinker, try doing what's and fix that shit because this is the manual on how to relationship in a functional way. Uh, why do you choose three months? Because like there's a honeymoon period, right? Have you guys ever heard the term honeymoon period? The honeymoon period tends to last about three months. So, and, and I notice this in people, like, like the, there's, we go into something called best behavior syndrome. This is literally a chemical high by mother nature. When you meet somebody and you haven't even kissed, but you're excited at their text messages, you're excited at seeing them, that's mother nature amping up your chemicals, distinguishing this person from all the rest and making you feel something. And so what she did is she gave you a chemical high. So you go into a chemical high even though you haven't kissed. But kissing itself creates another chemical. Everybody's lips creates a chemical that doesn't do anything to them till they come in contact with another set of lips. That combination is phenylethylamine. You are adding heroin to your high. So in essence, you went from snorting cocaine to doing heroin. Now you're really fucked up. And when you're really fucked up, you're missing the red flags, you don't understand reality for what it is, you're feeling, because the chemical in the kiss is an antidepressant, an aphrodisiac, and an amphetamine. So you feel amazing around this person. So do you know what you tell yourself? This person is amazing because you make an association. I feel amazing around them, therefore they are amazing. This is false. You don't know them. It's simply a chemical high that made you, you, made you lose your motherfucking mind. And so you don't want to introduce a chemical that makes you miss the red flags, misperceive somebody. You don't want to do that until you know who they are. Are you picking a hookup? Are they attractive and do I trust them? That's all you need to know. Go for it. You don't need to wait any amount of time to kiss them and get busy with them. Are you picking a future husband? Are you picking a future baby daddy? Are you picking somebody who's gonna travel the world with you? Are you picking somebody you're gonna make major financial decisions with? Then your criteria needs to be a lot longer. Are they respectful? Are they trustworthy? Are they honest? Do they have integrity? Are they financially responsible? Are they hardworking? Are they thoughtful? Are they caring? Are they consistent? Are they patient? Do you understand what I'm saying? But that initial impression is not real. Your initial impression is not real because you are in best behavior syndrome brought on by this chemical high. So give yourself time to know who they are before you kiss them. How long? Three months, that's the honeymoon period. This is when you start coming back down from that high. Three months is not too long and it's not too short. Anybody who can't hang out with you for three months, you think they're gonna be with you for 50 years? Hell no. Hell no. The person who says, no, three months is too long for me to hang out with you without kissing and having sex is a person who didn't give a shit about who you are, didn't care to start a relationship with you. All they wanted was kissing and sex. So weed out the selfish short-term thinkers because that's what they are. The ones who are just here for kissing and sex are selfish short-term thinkers. So weed them out using that no kissing for three months dating rule. Guess who's left standing in your vicinity? getting to know you, looking to win your heart, to build a life with you, a generous long-term thinker. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. What to do when a partner who doesn't want to work on issues leaves, moves, move on or keep trying? If they left, then they left. Get no more assholes, level up, get your next relationship. You don't chase after somebody who's not uh, 
intending to be in a relationship with you. Don't chase after somebody who's running away. If they want to go, okay, go. Um, obviously, I need to level up. Define your next relationship. Uh, those of you who want a notification when I go live, I see your I do's. Click my picture here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. See, I just did. See, I just did great info. Thank you. My boyfriend never asked me about my day, but I always ask him, should this bother me? No. Uh, no. What you were doing when you were asking him about his day and then being upset. Oh my goodness, hi! <laughs> He's so cute. If you ask him about his day and you're upset that he didn't ask about yours, then you asked about his day as a manipulation. You weren't interested in his day. You wanted him to ask about yours. That's a manipulation. When you give a behavior and then you hold the hands out and go put it back, that's a manipulation. Everything you do in a relationship is a gift. You should be with somebody who is generous. You should be generous. But when I give, if I give somebody um, a book, am I going to get upset if they give me flowers as a gift? No. Am I going to say, I gave you a book. Why didn't you give me a book? I'm going to say, oh my God, thank you for the flowers. This is what you need to do in your relationship. When you give a behavior, you give and you release the outcome. You don't, you don't sit there and go give it back. If you're going to do that, listen, before you do anything, ask yourself, is this a gift or manipulation? Am I expecting it back? Then it's a manipulation. So don't do it. Am I expecting it back? No, I'm okay if they don't do it back. Then it's a gift. Then go ahead and do it. But don't be manipulative because that doesn't work in a relationship. And by the way, you don't need him to ask you about your day. You can offer any important information by yourself. Hey, this happened today. I talked to this person. I did this. I had this success. I had this not work out. You don't need to be prompted to talk about your day. Just go ahead and share whatever you want to share. Somebody says, be with someone who asks how your day is, if that's what you want. In the beginning, you know, people are going to say that. How was your day? But when you settle into a relationship, your partner should be comfortable enough with you to know that you will share relevant information. And they don't need to ask you every single day, is there something you need to share with me? Right? That's called comfort. I, I, don't, I don't need to be polite with my man every day. I don't need to do those social constructs with him as though I don't see him every day, right? My man can take comfort in the knowledge that if there's something I want to share, I will share it. If I don't, then I won't. But he doesn't have to ask me every single day, how was your day? He, does, he doesn't need to. And I don't take offense if he doesn't. If there's something I want to say, I say it. I don't wait to be prompted. Do I ask how my partner's day was? I, I, I do. I do. At the end of the day, I say, "How's your day, baby?" And and it, you know, I and I know he's not going to go into detail. He's he's going to think and he's going to go, "Yeah, it was okay," or he's going to say, "Yeah, don't ask." If it was a really bad day, and you know, so be okay with a comfortable level of conversation in your relationship. What about for long distance? So. Uh, again, it's the same thing. Are, have you been together enough to settle into this relationship? Are you past the courtship phase? Are you in, are you past three months? Then if you have something to say, then say it. You don't need to wait for a, how was your day? You should be comfortable now communicating with each other without waiting for prompts for communication. What do you do once the three months is over, then do you become exclusive? That's the whole understanding. When you use a no kissing for three months dating role, um, by the way, do get no more assholes for the science. I love all you can use sushi. Uh, for the science, the scripts, the how. Um, but when you, when you enter this three month uh, no kissing thing, you do it with communication. So you before they move in for a kiss, right? If you have to say this on the first date, say it on the first date. Hey, I just want to let you know I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule because I really want to make sure I choose the right partner for myself. And three months is not too long, not too short. It gives us enough time to get to know each other. If we still want to kiss at three months, 
we will have a kiss on this date literally literally tell them the date of the first kiss it's three months out from the first time the two of you showed up physically for each other where there was a virtual date or a physical date three months from that date if we still want to kiss what's today what's today what are we we are the third so J july august september october if we still want to kiss on october 3rd we'll have our first kiss and start a committed long-term relationship so the understanding is the reason why we are hanging out spending this time together getting to know each other is to see if we're going to start a committed long-term relationship if you share a kiss at three months, the two of you understand we are starting an exclusive, committed, long-term relationship. No more games, no more hoping games. I got so many of you guys. I've been with him for six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, a year, and he hasn't asked me to be his girlfriend yet. How do I ask him where this is going? Girl, you should have had that conversation before you kissed and understood where you were going together if you were on the same page. So no confusion. When you use that no kissing for three months dating rule, there is zero confusion about the role in each other's lives. If you uh, have bedroom questions, I only do those on coaching sessions. I don't do them on lives. Don't give women info. Had your money. Goodbye, motherfucker. We block clowns, we block clowns. If you reach the three month and you're not feeling it, what's the script? Um, it's the same script you would say to anybody. Like, I really, I really enjoy you, but I don't think this is a good match for us for a relationship. My partner isn't good at sharing his feelings when he's sad. How can I help him? Let him go through his thoughts and emotions. Uh, let him go through his thoughts and emotions. Don't ride his emotional roller coaster. If he wants to retreat inside himself, and most men do, uh, most men go inside themselves to go work through their thoughts and feelings. If he wants to do that, that's totally fine. Read fix that shit so that you understand how to manage your own emotional roller coaster and not write his when he goes through his feelings. The guy was great at texting for the first week or so, but now never answers, what does it mean? It means you should be using a no kissing for three months dating rule and talking to multiple people simultaneously and not having expectations from somebody you don't know and letting the one who's going to be consistent and plugged in rise above the rest and show you who he is. You always wear the prettiest blouses. I am married. Thank you, my love. Thank you for the roses, Hazel. Uh, which book talks about divorce? So Comeback Queen helps you uh, put your heart back together um, after a breakup. Do you mention the three month no kissing when you start chatting or when meeting for the first time? When you see them for the first time. Um, so there's two conversations to have when you see them for the first time. The first one is fundamental values. Hey, I just wanna let you know I'm really intent on having a committed long-term relationship because I want to have kids, I want to get married, I want to buy a house, I want to travel the world with a partner. Fundamental values, those things that your partner needs to want as much as you in order for the two of you to be aligned. Um, if Once you establish the two of you share those fundamental values, um, because don't fall for somebody who doesn't share your fundamental values. If you want to get married, don't fall for somebody who doesn't want to get married. That's just you getting in your own way and making yourself unhappy. So find out what the fundamental values are before you fall for them. So find out early, 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 early. Um, once you establish that you have the same fundamental values, then you introduce the no kissing for three months dating rule. Hey, just want to let you know, I like you. I want to see where this goes, but I'm using this rule to make sure I choose the right person. Can a woman who's very in tune with her emotions and a man who's very neutral about emotions work out? Absolutely. Men are a fantastic, fantastic guide for, like men, by the way, not guys, but men are very stable. They're very, you know, looking after their own emotions kind of people. And um, so they, they, they tend to be like rather solid. They'll go through their thoughts and feelings, but they really make an effort to um, not be vomiters, right? So, uh, which is what we're calling neutral here. So yes, absolutely, absolutely. But you know, in tune with your emotions, I hope you don't mean vomiting, right? I don't. I hope you don't mean in tune with this overabundance of stress, fear, and anxiety, and I vomit that into the relationship. 
in, I need to talk about my feelings. No, you don't need to talk about your feelings. You need to deal with your feelings. Your partner's not responsible for your feelings. Your partner's not your therapist. You don't need to go talk about your feelings. You need to go address your feelings. You need to go meditate. You need to go drink a glass of water. You need to go for a walk to get the brain moving forward. You need to eat some healthy foods in order to create more serotonin in your system. You need to take some vitamin D and boost your mood. You need to, to take some 5-HTP, increase your serotonin levels. You don't need to go, you know, I'm in tune, so I talk about my emotions. No, my love. No, 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 no. You don't need to be talking about emotions all the time, about feelings. I feel this way. Uh uh. Be present, be in the moment, exist with your partner, meet men where they are, and deal with your emotions if you need to deal with your emotions. So, what if you do the no kissing for three months rule, but you don't like the first kiss? They do. Um, easy 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 fix you teach them what you like teach them what you like so this is what you do you like like listen i'm i'm a lip kisser not a tongue kisser and the first time i kiss my husband he's like la, 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 la. a lot of guys will do that right like they'll, they'll take the technique that you know they thought the other girl liked and maybe she didn't like that but you have a different way that you like to kiss so you need to show them how you like to kiss so what you're gonna do is um, like you go to kiss them. He's like, blah, blah, blah. don't just stay there and take it. Like break the kiss. Just like pull back enough to break the kiss, but not the intimacy. So you pull back to break the kiss, but you stay close. And you go, let me kiss you. And he's gonna go, huh? And you're gonna go, close your close your eyes and open your mouth just a little bit, and let me kiss your lips and show you how I like to be kissed. And say this in like this this sweet, low, you know, intimate way. Keep them in that intimacy mode and, and just say, just close your eyes and open your mouth just a little bit and just let me show you how I like to be kissed. I love you so much. Thank you for taking your time out of your day talking to us and giving advice. Of course, my love, I love doing it. Let's hope it all works out, yes. Uh, I show my partner what I like. It's hard to start, but if they're worth it, they'll listen. They do, right? My husband, he is the best kisser I've ever had in my entire life. I am so happy I showed him what I liked because a good man wants to know what makes you happy. When you tell him what you want, he will work at it. So yeah, I taught my husband how to kiss and it took that long and he became the best kisser ever. Um, you know, listen, working the hardware, uh, that took some time for him to understand how to get me to the end. And I, I gave him time and he gave it time and we got there. And now, I mean, the man's, you know, I got no complaints. I got zero, zero, none. Maybe, well, you know, maybe, uh, maybe he's too good. Maybe he's too good. That might be a complaint. I don't know what I want, so we just we just don't kiss. Okay, if you want help with that, come get a coaching session. <clears throat> uh, please make a TikTok just about breaking the kiss. I did go binge, go binge, go binge my TikToks. Go binge the TikToks. I have done that. Guys, hello lovelies. Is there anybody here? How many are we are we all here? No, we're missing one. What what are we missing? No more assholes. Where'd I put no more assholes? Um Oh well, I guess I made a I guess I made a TikTok with it. It's on my windowsill. Does anybody want me? We'll binge it. Bonjour de la France. Uh anybody want me to do a book walkthrough a brief description of what each of my nine books are about cover me in sunshine yes yes we have a yes yes on the book walkthrough oh we got two yeses we got two yeses. Uh, in my work from home office bedroom, occasional guest room. Oh, oh, guys, I can't do puzzle pieces. When you want to say something, put it all in one box. 
Uh, can you talk about emotionally unavailable men versus men that aren't emotional? Um, I think we, um, I, 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 I don't know what the difference is except to say generous long-term thinkers are ready for a relationship, ready to, to be a contributor, to be plugged into a relationship. Selfish short-term thinkers are not ready to be a contributor and be plugged into a relationship. Yes, you can ask questions. So maybe that's what you're talking about. Which first book do I recommend? I do have a What Book is Right For You quiz in the link tree in my bio. If you take it, you're gonna love it. It's super cute. It's 20 questions, yes or no, and then it lists my books in the order you wanna read them in, and it even puts a little percentage bar beside each one, um, telling you how much you wanna read each book. But the quick key answer to that is if you're single, no more assholes. If you're in a relationship, fix that shit. If you're codependent, fix that shit and custom made. If you're trying to get over a breakup, come back clean. Uh, how do you feel about a man you're with keeping photos of him and an ex? Listen, uh, just because you enter the picture doesn't mean the past doesn't exist. Don't be so insecure that you need them to purge their existence, their very existence before you came along. They had a life before you. There are people in their life before you. It's okay that they exist. It's okay that there's proof of that. Don't ask your partner to go through all the social media, go through all the pictures and throw everything out. This is literally you saying, hey, go spend an hour reminiscing about your ex. At the same time, resenting me for taking an hour out of your day to force you to do something you weren't even thinking about that feels completely irrelevant to you. What if they keep photos out on display? So is it because there's children? Hello, love. What about if you really like each other, but you have very different boundaries? This sounds like a mismatch. Old prom pic. Tips on dating a much older woman for the first time. Uh, do a love language quiz. Find out what her love language is. Hi everyone, please get things that shit is truly amazing. Hello Pete, Julia, hello lovely. Uh, so I'm in a relationship with a guy but he's never open about anything, what do I do? Come get a coaching session so I can understand what you mean about this. And we need to unpack this situation uh, to help you have some clarity and understand how you should be uh, navigating. I agree with Julia. Okay. Yeah. Are you busy? I'm not. Okay. You want to go well, from motorcycle? First, we'll, first, we'll go around the part of the parking lot okay and then if so then we'll gear up and uh and go for the ride okay hey, babe. i love you okay bye well guess did you guys hear that did you guys hear that uh what to do about men giving the silent treatment when mad uh that's a symptom of conflict get rid of the conflict so get no more uh, get fix that shit and remove the conflict from your relationship and you won't be experiencing this anymore um and you will you will understand um so looks like i'm going for a motorcycle ride with my husband um i'm gonna i'm gonna go but before i go i'm gonna give you guys a quick walk through of my book titles give you a brief description about each one in the meantime set yourself up to get a notification when i come back live Click my picture up here. Once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. Um, so uh, Comeback Queen is gonna help you get over a breakup, put your heart back together and heal. Um, doesn't matter if it was a year ago, if you're yearning, you're pining, you're hurting, get Comeback Queen. Uh, then you're gonna move on to No More Assholes. This is the book that's gonna help you make sure the next person you choose is the right one. No more picking selfish short-term thinkers. Uh, you're going to get yourself a generous long-term thinker who loves you so you can build a life and a relationship with them. Men, this is your version. 
the perfect play. This is how you are going to get in a relationship with a woman who's a generous long-term thinker as well. Uh, ladies, after the first kiss, it's going to help you transition from the courtship phase to the reality phase with very little insecurity because you understand the shifts and changes that need to take place so you're not going to freak out. Um, I'm going to teach you how to deal with baby mama, kids, parents, all those things. Uh, Fix That Shit is a book that helps you get to zero fighting in your relationships. Um, this is going to teach you how to manage your emotions, your behaviors, understand your partner, and resolve conflict without there being defensiveness or any fights. My husband and I fought for 10 years. We haven't had a single fight in five years. Custom made goes really well with Fix That Shit if you're codependent. Um, so if you're codependent, you're making your partner your purpose. It's time for you to make your purpose your purpose. So this book answers two questions. What is my purpose and talent and how can I monetize it? Do start getting paid doing what you love, you guys. It is the best thing you'll ever do for yourself other than getting yourself a partner who matches your love language if it's physical affection. Uh, Dating 101, understand the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. Parents get this for your teenagers. This is the sex ed they need. Um, I don't swear in this book. This teaches them how to date and set healthy boundaries and um, how, how to choose the right partner and not, not fall for losers. Hubby's here. Fake love need not apply. How to avoid posers, losers, scammers, and predators. You will find this as a free book in the link tree in my bio. Hit the free book button. I need custom made. Yes. And then say yes to goodness. 10 steps to complete and happy you.